Hello, what is up, fellow historians? Welcome to the pilot episode of Colasay Sayan, where we, your Colasa hosts, discuss the Philippine history to keep critical thinking alive and burning. The title for today's podcast is Commemorating Encarnacion Alsona's History with your hosts, Isa and Irish. We will be serving you quality, fact-checked, and reliable information about our history. With that, let me start by introducing today's historian, Encarnacion Alzona. Known as the first Filipino to obtain a PhD, who also fought tirelessly to obtain women's suffrage here in the Philippines. Wow, we sure are starting with someone brilliant. So please, tell the listeners more about her. Encarnacion Alzona was born on March 25, 1895 in Binyan, but grew up in the province of Tayabas, now known as Quezon. Did you know that she is a distant cousin of Jose Rizal? Oh yes, our national hero. So based on our research, she finished her bachelor's degree in history from the University of the Philippines, Manila, and a master's degree the following year, while she obtained her PhD from Columbia University in New York City. She then became a writer, a historian, and a professor. But her excellence does not end there. Because we might not be talking about her for today's episode if it weren't for her bravery and fighting spirit. Because in 1919, this 24-year-old woman argued in an article for the Philippine Review that women should be given the right to vote if they are to be recognized. Because according to Alzona, a person enjoying full political rights deserves greater respect and esteem than a disenfranchised one. Yes, in fact, she grew up during a period of tremendous social change. She applied her education to research and wrote a thesis on the development of school education of women in the Philippines, which sparked her lifetime advocacy for education and women's rights. Encarnacion Alzona is a historian who has written several books about Philippine history. She also wrote several biographies on Filipina pioneers. She co-founded the Philippine Historical Association, a professional historian's organization, in 1955. Also, from 1959 to 1966, she was the chair of the National Historical Institute. Fellow listeners, we should be really proud of her because Encarnacion Alsona was appointed a National Scientist of the Philippines in 1985, the highest honor bestowed upon her. Alsona's brilliance was recognized around the world. She was even appointed chair of the UNESCO Subcommittee on Social Science, Philosophy, and Humanities in 1946. Unbelievably amazing! Okay, so here is another piece of information that will inspire our young audiences. She founded the Kababaihang Rizalista, a civic organization encouraging women to represent Rizal's beliefs. Most importantly, in terms of nation building, we can say that she is one of the keys to highlighting women's rights, gender equality, and suffrage in the Philippines. A Filipina who makes numerous achievements and contributions to her country, that indeed gave the Philippines, before and until now, the impact of her excellency. Truly, Filipino women are limitless. Speaking of impact, we know it is vital for our listeners to know Encarnacion Alzona's influence on modern Philippine society. To our dear listeners, as you can see today, it is no longer rare to see a woman with a doctorate. From being kept inside the walls of their homes and doing chores, women can now participate actively in society the way they should. We now have the right to obtain the highest degree in education. And with what we have seen during the previous elections, we can also elect them as government officials. 
who knows, maybe one of our listeners could become and be national leaders themselves. Was it in 1986 when we first elected our first female president? Oh, that was actually 49 years after women gained the right to vote. That year was quite historic. We not only ousted a dictator but also elected the first female president. And this was not the only time it happened because we also elected another female president as our 14th president. We now have women national leaders and professionals recognized locally and internationally for their excellent work. We continue to celebrate Encarnacion Alsona's lifelong commitment and advocacy because it is through women like her that we get to maximize our full potential both in the present and in the future. It really requires one to exhaust all efforts to maximize female power. You see? That is true, Irish. As shown in Encarnacion Alsona's life, it is through her intelligence and courage that she was able to raise her advocacy and amplify the call for women's suffrage. Her dedication and commitment to the movement opened doors for so many opportunities that we benefit from up until today. We have gained every right to be in our places right now. Before us, Encarnacional Zona and our female ancestors surely gained every right to pass on the very cause and the fruits of their bravery and movement. And you know what? It really should become the norm. Their gender should not define what, but with determination and the passion for succeeding despite being alienated by the rest of society. Wow! This pilot episode inspired me and of course the audiences because of our featured historian. Unfortunately, that is all the time we have. But don't worry, dear listeners, we will be back. Yes, that is true. To our dear listeners, stay tuned. We have a lot of things in store for you. But before we go, we would like to thank ABC Productions for the hard work. From our talented researchers and scriptwriters, Yuka and Chen, to our dedicated editor, Kirsten, this would not have been possible without the team. Of course, thank you also to my lovely partner, Irish, for being with me in this episode. Always hoping to create more content with you. Thank you also, Isa, for being my partner in serving quality, fact-check, and reliable information about our history. Again, this has been your host, Isa and Irish for Colasay Sayan commemorating Encarnacional Zona's her story. See you next time!